So when I was in 11th grade, I watched a movie called Fight Club. And in Fight Club, there were two characters. One was very timid and shaky and shy and unsure of himself. And the other one was extremely confident and just didn't really seem to care. Now where it gets interesting is that later on in the movie, you find out that they're actually the same person. And that same timid, shy person ends up becoming the confident person. And he would go on to do things that he would previously only daydream about. Now this story is actually very similar to engineering interviews because I experienced the same thing. I remember some of my earlier engineering interviews, I was very timid, shy, and I would walk in and kind of unsure of myself. However, some of my recent interviews, including the interview that I did for my PhD, I was a lot more confident and detached and I went into these interviews with the goal of having fun rather than trying to desperately get the job. And this was because I changed two things about myself between the time I was in high school until the time I was later in college. And both of these things that I changed can be actually summarized by this quote by Bobby Fischer, who was the world's top chess player. And Bobby said that psychologically, you have to have confidence in yourself and this confidence should be based on fact. And this second part is so important. In fact, it is so important that I took the quote and I put it as the first page of the book that I wrote about electrical engineering, which I'll put a link for a free PDF if you're interested. But essentially the two things that changed about myself that I observed between crappy interviews and really good interviews were confidence and technical skills. But the thing is in engineering, these two things are really the same thing because your confidence and the confidence they project will only be true if you really know what you're talking about and if you're really sure of what you're talking about. So if you go into a technical interview such as engineering and you're expected to be asked technical questions and you don't really know what you're talking about, no amount of confidence or projected confidence will make up for that because deep down you'll still be shaky and you'll still be unsure of your technical knowledge. And likewise, if you really have good strong technical foundation and if you really know what you're talking about, then by definition you should be confident and you should not be timid because you know what you're going to be talking about and there's no question that you're going to be asked that you would not know. And even if you're asked something that you don't know, you can easily say, I don't know, but I could probably look it up and get back to you. So in order to prepare for engineering interviews ahead of time, I'm not going to give you specific questions. I'm not going to give you like what to memorize. I'm going to give you one simple advice, which is is know your stuff really well, such that when you go in, you're going in to have fun and you go in and you want to be questioned about it. And I remember when I was walking into my SpaceX interview and I was being asked technical questions, I was hungry for technical questions. I wanted them to ask more questions, more questions. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. And the interview was like six hours and most people, most candidates are usually drained. I was very energized and they would keep asking me, do you want a break? And I would say, no, give, give me more questions. And that's because I went in and I knew what I was talking about. I, I had technical knowledge and that technical knowledge fed into my confidence. Now, obviously this built over a long period of time. I did four years of bachelor's and then five years of grad school. So I'm graduating, well, four years of grad school. My fifth year is gonna be coming up. I'm graduating with a PhD in electrical engineering. So obviously there was a period of eight years where I accumulated a lot of technical knowledge, which gave me confidence to walk into these kind of interviews and just be like, okay, give me your toughest questions. Show me what it's like. And that's the only advice I have for you as an engineering student or anybody who is about to have some type of technical interview. And it doesn't have to be one month. This could be like an interview one year down the line is be so good that you walk into the interviews and your mindset is, I want to be asked difficult questions. I don't want to be asked easy questions. I want them to actually see what I'm capable of because the more difficult questions you're asked, the more you're able to showcase your knowledge and the more you're able to showcase your creativity and your ability to solve problems. And why wouldn't you want to show that? And this is also why it's important to apply to multiple jobs and, and kind of have multiple options because when you walk in with kind of a desperate attitude of, oh, I really need this job, I really need this job, you'll be a lot more nervous and you'll be less yourself and you'll be more likely to kind of forget your technical knowledge and you'll be too attached to the outcome that they give you the job. But if you walk in with the mindset of, okay, I'm coming in and I'm gonna see what this is about and hopefully, I get the job, but if I don't get the job, that probably means we're not a good match and that's okay. Uh, you're kind of in this like detached mindset that really helps take the weight off of the interviews. Now, I know this is much tougher, especially if you're an undergrad and you have not had your first internship or any, any, and you're like kind of, you really need that first opportunity. Many of these jobs I didn't even apply for. Recruiters reach out to me, whether on LinkedIn or through email. And that's because I spent a lot of time gathering a lot of experiences and that built up the confidence. However, before you go in and try to sharpen your skills, it's very important first to decide what you want to work on and, and decide what is the thing you want to invest your time doing such that you could spend hours working on it and getting better at it. And I actually had a very good presentation that explains all of that in detail and how I came to decide what I want to do with my life and end up at NASA, MIT, and be doing a lot of really cool things. And I, and I made a video about how you can design the perfect career for you and how you can get kickstarted in this journey and basically make the right steps and avoid all the mistakes I made. And it should be somewhere over here, so you should go ahead and watch it.